I would strongly support them doing that. People look to them, they're leaders. This is Jim Crow on steroids, what they're doing in, in Georgia and 40 other states. President Biden is quite possibly the most influential voice condemning Georgia for its Republican-backed voting law. And as you saw there, he had no problem speaking up about moving the All-Star game. But his White House hasn't taken the same swing at the Beijing Olympics over China's record of human rights violations. Joining me now to discuss the discrepancy is Florida Congressman Michael Waltz. Sir, thanks for being here. Appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. So what is your stance on this? Because, you know, the the administration has, as we just heard Joe Biden there speaking up, uh, they have spoken up about moving the all-star game out of Georgia into Colorado. But, you know, the conversation around the Beijing Olympics isn't a new one. I mean, you and others have been on this program talking about this for quite some time now, and we haven't really heard much from the administration. Well, moving the games out of uh, moving, excuse me, the the baseball game, the all star game out of Atlanta is really yeah, all, all it does is hurt uh, many minority owned businesses. Uh, it, all it does is hurt, hurt Georgians. Uh, we all know that that uh, that the voting law there is 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 certainly not racist. Uh, it's actually expanding voting. So the hypocrisy is on mo multiple levels. One. Uh, there are many states with much more restrictive ID laws uh, and and voting laws than Georgia has. New York, Biden's own Delaware, uh, and mm -hmm. others. Number two, this is really about fear mongering uh, over uh, Georgia to get folks riled up to believe that it's racist, so that they can justify getting rid of the filibuster and then justify passing HR1, which will fundamentally change the way we vote in the United States. But on China in particular, these corporations are making millions, including Major League Baseball, uh, who just expanded its deal in China on the backs of slave labor in the middle of genocide and are doing nothing about it. The Biden administration yesterday said they're considering a boycott of the, of the Olympics in China next year. But in the fine print, Julian, it's just a diplomatic boycott, right. meaning we won't send senior officials. The woke corporations will still make millions on sponsorships and Beijing will still have a global platform to whitewash all that it's doing in terms of genocide, Hong Kong, and releasing the coronavirus and covering it up. Uh, and, and we just cannot have that. We cannot give Beijing that global platform, flying the American flag and turning an eye uh, to everything that they've done. Well, a senior State Department official said to CNBC on Tuesday, our position on the 2022 Olympics has not changed. We have not discussed and are not discussing any joint boycott with allies and partners. So it's going to be interesting to see what ends up happening with that. In the meantime, I want to get your opinion on this. Um, indirect U.S.-Iran talks here um, on reviving the <laughs> nuclear deal, reportedly on the right track. At least that's what we're hearing. Um, you know, if if that were to happen, what would that mean for us? What would that look like? Well, President Biden started out, I think, on the right foot in saying that we will not lift any sanctions until Iran becomes fully compliant. But they're already backtracking uh, on that. These talks essentially are setting the stage for us to lift sanctions, which is what the Iranian regime desperately wants. Their economy is in shambles. Their oil exports are in shambles. Uh, they cannot pay their terrorists uh, around the Middle East uh, as they used to do because of the maximum pressure campaign that the Trump administration very effectively uh, put in place. And I would hate to see us give away that leverage again, uh, as the Obama administration did, be, uh, you know, in this premise that if we're nice to them, they'll be nice back to us. I did lead a bipartisan letter, 70 Democrats uh, and 70 Republicans. Uh, to the administration saying any future deal has to encompass terrorism, ballistic missiles, hostages, has to have a tough sanctions regime, and cannot have temporary sunset provisions. If the Iranians were serious, they would, number one, release the Americans that they're holding hostage right now as we speak. And number two, how about they stop killing Americans through their proxies in Iraq? Uh, so, it, look, uh, we cannot give away that leverage. Uh, if we keep it in place... They'll, I, I do believe the regime eventually will come to the table, but this time from a position of weakness. This time we can get a much better deal. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's not looking good so far with the beginning of these talks. Wow.
Okay. Congressman Michael Waltz, thank you, as always, for providing that insight. We appreciate you joining us. Have a good day. Okay. Thanks so much.